Hello, everyone, and welcome to the AHEAD Spring Digital Summit. My name is Eric Mater, Senior Solutions Architect. I will be joined shortly by two of my AHEAD colleagues, Tim Curlis and Burke Johnson. All three of us are focused on helping organizations adopt modern application development practices as part of their digital transformations. One of the key challenges that many organizations face is a lack of alignment. So many organizations still place heavy emphasis on hierarchical org charts and operate with the assumption that those higher in the ranks should be the ones who have a clearer understanding of strategy and direction. Meanwhile, those lower on the chart are viewed as the doers. They don't need to understand the big picture. They just need tasks and, requir and requirements to go execute. This leads to many unintentional problems. Most notably that the doers don't really understand the business context of the work that they're doing. Therefore, they often don't really understand why certain work is prioritized over other items that they may perceive as more interesting or more worthwhile. This leads to tension, lack of an understanding of measures of success, and many activities being driven more by assumptions rather than clear hypotheses or empirical data. Ultimately, this leads to a lack of accountability. The doers are viewed as less important than the work. Just get stuff done, even if it takes working nights and weekends to make it happen. Work then stagnates and waterfall processes take the precedence to give, take precedence to give the illusion that the doers are working on the right things and delivering value that drives the organization forward. As many of us who have had hands-on technical roles can attest, this leads to a mentality of project over product. As long as we deliver something that addresses as many requirements as possible on time and on budget, then surely we have delivered the right thing. No need to pay attention to any measures or KPIs or figure out whether those requirements we gathered months or perhaps years ago are still valid. Therefore, it is one thing for leaders within an organization to say that they're going on the journey of digital transformation but so many still think that their rigid waterfall processes and lack of clear business measurement frameworks can continue. Then they are surprised when their digital transformation fails or isn't as impactful as expected. Now, in order for an organization to embrace digital transformation, they must also embrace digital, uh, agility transformation. The two go hand in hand. You can't have one without the other. Now, Agile is often mistaken as a particular framework, such as Scrum or SAFE. Therefore, we at AHEAD prefer to use the term agility rather than just agile. True business agility is the embrace of these core values across people, processes, and tools within all levels of the organization. While there is value in the items on the right, it is less than the values on the, it's less than the items on the left. In order to effectively go down the journey of digital transformation, an organization must fundamentally embrace individuals and interactions, working technologies, end user collaboration, and responding to change over processes and tools, comprehensive documentation, contract negotiation, and rigidly following a plan. Not that anything on the right isn't needed or doesn't have value, it is just less important than the values on the left they shouldn't be implemented at the expense of the items on the left. There are some common root causes for why organizations fail on their transformation journeys. This is certainly not an exhaustive list, but these are the most common causes. Many of these barriers are caused by a lack of business agility, not necessarily a lack of agile practices. We talked about a few of these already. IT is often perceived as difficult to do business with since it can take days or weeks of lead time between requests for IT services and completion. Lack of transparency is always going to be the result of work not mapped to clear IT objectives and key results tied to an overall digital strategy. Siloed org charts lead to teams allocated to specific technologies or specialties requiring multiple handoffs and complex dependency management. And then operations tends to be constantly in fire firefighting mode, supporting completed work that was quote unquote, tossed over the wall. So why do most organizations refuse to change? Well, 
they view agility as a delivery methodology and not a fundamental culture and practice transformation for IT. Now, DevSecOps processes and tools with well-defined org-wide standards and guardrails are certainly necessary, but they are not the full picture. They must be utilized in tandem with agile, indiv in agile individuals and interactions. To, to illustrate this, there's a famous quote by an IT executive by the name of Christopher Little. DevSecOps isn't about automation, just as astronomy isn't about telescopes. While many of the DevSecOps patterns require automation, DevSecOps also requires cultural norms and an architecture that allows for the shared goals to be achieved throughout the IT value stream. So there's not much sense in using automate, automated release, configuration, and monitoring capabilities with infrequent or high-risk Big Bang builds, tests, and packaging on the development side. So how do we think about this at ahead? Well, for starters, true business agility requires cross-functional teaming. Put simply, business stakeholders must be willing to roll up their sleeves and work with the, the doers on a daily basis. This doesn't necessarily mean that those in the business are, are on keyboards, but rather they don't put themselves in the position as the consumers of the IT products and services being delivered. To put this another way, business and technology must be on the same side of the table, focused on delivering the best possible outcomes for those human beings that are actually utilizing IT products and services. We often refer to these as internal and external customers. In order for this to work effectively, three foundations are required. One is obviously agile ways of working, which most organizations have some sort of a practice in place. But agile isn't the only foundation. Organizations must think about flexible architectures, leveraging either public or private cloud operating models. They must also be focused on moderate analytics and insights, most critical being objectives and key results tied to actual business value delivery not just a mechanism to force arbitrary deliverable deadlines. From an execution perspective, true agility transformation can only be achieved by adoption of a culture and a mindset of continuous exploration, integration, deployment, and the ability to release on demand. What we get ahead often find is that no, organ no organization is ever starting their transformation journey completely from square one. This is especially true from the perspective of Agile ways of working and DevSecOps. For example, Agile has been around for quite some time now. The original manifesto was published in 2002. For this reason, we adopt a very meet you where you are mentality, leveraging any existing good practices that an organization may have rather than insisting that they start completely from scratch. However, what we do often see is very disjointed or siloed transformation efforts. Often, agile transformations are attempted without a consideration for DevSecOps practices. It is even more rare to see, that, see this tied to an overarching cloud strategy driven by an actual rigor around measuring business impacts with real-time data and analytics. So how can your organization get started and how can AHEAD help? Well, first, it is important to understand that transformation is difficult. Processes and org structures are going to have to fundamentally change. People will be in different roles, and there will certainly be better days than others. Expect that true maturity isn't going to be realized for five to 10 years. This is normal, but it's also not an excuse to not get started. Often organizations find themselves in analysis paralysis. They spend so much time planning their quote unquote perfect transformation, tying every step of the way to phases of their digital strategy. However, no transformation is predictable and it's going to take many turns that are unexpected, but will also be extremely enlightening and worthwhile. For this reason, AHEAD created our Agility Catalyst offering. This 12 week program helps organizations create a case for change, that sense of urgency by first getting leadership on board via mindset trainings. The focus then shifts to setting up and coaching initial pilot teams, folk utilizing customer-centric practices, measurable OKRs and KPIs with the intention of extracting learnings and indicators that the transformation is underway. Your organization will learn a lot during the Agility Catalyst. 
By the end of it, organizations that we've worked with find themselves already building momentum on their transformation journey rather than stuck in that analysis paralysis. Of course, DevSecOps tooling is still a major component of this transformation. I will now hand it off to my colleague, Tim Curlis, to discuss one of the critical components of DevSecOps transformation, our ahead container operating model. Thanks, Eric. My name is Tim Curlis. I'm Chief Architect for DevOps at Ahead, and uh, we're going to talk about the container operating model, which is a method to the madness when it comes to building a cloud native uh, development environment for application teams looking to refactor, looking to modernize, and in general, just build new fresh applications, as well as refactor some old ones. This plugs into our DevOps story in a way that I think uh, people are familiar with, but perhaps struggling to, to implement and conceptualize beyond that. Um, so of course, the main idea with this DevOps loop is that it is a loop and we wanna get this information back to the developers as quickly as possible. But at the same time, we have uh, new and upcoming ways to host and build applications, things like containers and serverless functions, running in an enterprise cloud and um, really even building beyond just simple continuous build and integration to a full scale continuous release model with uh, built in security wrapped around. And as Eric just talked about, a lot of agile methods that are really going to bring this all together with how the, the teams are changing and building. And um, uh, the, the idea is to sort of build this operating model in a way that lets the various teams, infrastructure operations, the development team and the security team really focus on long-term support, scalability, and consistency across the different environments and different platforms. So this is all about the scale and enablement from our perspective. And all of this is built on this concept of intelligent operations. So what do our customers see? Uh, it's not a matter anymore of it just being up or down. It needs to be performant. It needs to be providing features that they want to see and that they want to use. Uh, and we need to see what they see so that we can gauge the platform's success and you know, know where to go with the development. Um, what's happening in the environment? We want to correlate things. Um, containers, for example, make it harder than ever to, uh, as things distribute and stretch out, to, to really correlate things happening between the different microservices. Um, so we want to encourage and sh support developers doing metrics uh, and instrumentation within the applications they're building. And concordantly, we want to take those and string those together in a way that makes sense on the platform side. Uh, and that will change how we respond to the needs, uh, provisioning internally, provisioning externally for customer demand um, and, and workflow engines and doing a lot of work with developer enablement self-service on this, this operating model. Um, but ultimately, how do we resolve issues faster? We want to triage incidents faster. We want to remediate and we want to have the tools that uh, pr provide the functionality we need, but the lowest common set of those tools so that we're not uh, encumbered and in tool sprawl, so to speak. Uh, and all of this comes together um, to form this operating model, but we really see some symptoms of, of a stalled DevOps movement that impedes this. So I've broken these out into some strategy factors, some cultural factors, and some process factors. So uh, a lot of the ones we see most commonly, hair on fire, this is my favorite. Um, the teams are so busy taking care of the existing applications and infrastructure that, um, and, and maybe they get a few cycles to build a container platform with an application, but um, the, the amount of work and, and lack of time just makes it so that we can't make a scalable platform. So this container operating model is here to uh, quickly on-ramp to a scalable platform so that uh, the teams can focus on you know, really gaining some innovation time and some ability to really work on business quality services. Um, a lot of other things that happen in the in the strategy sense, sense is kind of a lack of success criteria, maybe a past agile implementation went poorly. So a lot of uh, the things that, that Eric talked about, um, you know, the same thing we see here and wanting to really build this platform uh, to help uh, help organizations get beyond these these factors. Um, and then from a cultural standpoint, you know, certainly cultures uh, impeding, but continuing to transform um, silos. You know, we want to make silos uh, uh, not a blocker necessarily. Sometimes silos are a good thing, but um, really want to make them uh, uh, not so much of a blocker for the implementation and scalability of this platform. Um, and of course, with that comes a, a, a challenge to get security involved um, for various reasons. But you know, the the writing has been on the wall for a, a number of years now that getting security involved earlier and more often is is going to result in a faster cycle time and delivery time. So it's very important, uh, and this container operating model encourages that. 
So uh, our modern applications team sees a few things uh, very commonly. The, the incremental monolithic design, we're combating that, so to speak, with uh, cloud native application, microservices, decentralized deployment, and uh, the use of a lot of um, uh, different message bus systems to move information around and stream and do more streaming and things like that. Um, but with that has come a lot of arduous regression in the past. We've all been there. Um, so using some modern concepts like test-driven development paired with some really modern and scalable pipeline concepts around CICD. And a lot of the, the process in this container operating model is focused on how can we leverage CICD not just to produce the application, build, and release, uh, but to also create a, a GitOps model or a platform infrastructure as code model that will plug into the same types of pipelines. Uh, we found those, those success stories on the development side certainly translate to the infrastructure operations side as well. Um, the siloed collaboration, DevOps, perhaps DevSecOps, uh, as is often the case, th this is something that has been a struggle, but um, both the container operating model and the agility catalyst are designed to bring the teams together, um, create more collaboration. Um, and then just the, the wrestling enterprise infrastructure, we've been stuck for a long time doing data center transformations, moving things into the cloud, what gets moved, what migrates, what doesn't. Uh, and, and some of this has taken away a little bit from the fresh take on um, cloud native platform design. So we really wanna focus in this cloud operating model focuses on building that performance scalable platform that can really be the, the, the basis for um, providing a service internally to the development teams, and the business service teams um, to really create some, some fantastic business applications. Uh, so the first part of this and, and what we've built around this is an assessment process. Now, um, if, of course, you have to have something to assess. So if you're very, very early in the process of building a cloud native platform, um, we, you know, we may not assess it. We may uh, guide you in how to build it. And uh, fortunately, the, the operating model itself is identical, whether you're assessing an existing or building new. Uh, and, and the process for this is, is very similar. So uh, we're able to leverage that and, and really accelerate. Uh, but from an assessment perspective, um, understanding maybe that environment in the corner and how do we move that up in the Kubernetes maturity model, which you'll see here at the bottom. Uh, most organizations we work with are, are more in the one to two, maybe three uh, of this of this five step um, model from Fairwinds. But um, you know, wanting to use this as a way to move folks into uh, the four and the five level of maturity and really doing more automation, more operational um, excellence, and things like that. Um, so we'll enable teams to move more applications onto the platform because the platform will be more scalable. Uh, and we've all seen the, the licenses being purchased, but not necessarily hosting more than a single application. And, and so as we are able to move more onto the platform, we increase that efficiency and value of all of the pieces that went into building that platform. Um, we'll secure the platform more uh, securing against the, the many vulnerabilities that exist out there. And, and by virtual securing the platform, that'll help also secure the applications and data. Uh, and finally, we'll operate the, the application and platform together in production with greater reliability uh, and ultimately with faster issue resolution. So again, existing platform, we're going to assess that so we understand where to go and where to build up from there. Uh, and once we know that, or if we're starting from a relatively fresh kind of new greenfield perspective, either way, um, we'll tie that all into our container operating model, which you see here. Um, and, and this is a 12 pillar model that's really built around um, all of the aspects that we believe are necessary, regardless of what you're doing from a container platform perspective. It could be um, Kubernetes in the cloud on GKE or AKS or EKS. Uh, it could be an enterprise platform like Tanzu or OpenShift or Rancher. Um, in any of those cases, these are the, the pieces of the puzzle that don't necessarily come out of the box um, ready to go, but take some um, conscious thought and effort to build into the into the system so that you really achieve uh, the greatest level of success and the greatest level of adoption. And so as we look across this, of course, uh, choosing the container orchestrator, the right one for your organization is part of this. And then how do we get into the data center systems such as network and load balancing? Um, how do we get our customers and clients into the platform through the existing and, and different network systems that exist today? Uh, and ideally do this in a way that both provides um, the greatest number of container oriented features, but reduces the amount of rework and, and repurchasing of tooling and hardware. Um, and service mesh is another area that's very up and coming and, and this 
focus around making every single microservice its own uh, sort of segmented island so that we can control um, ingress and traffic flow and rules um, is a very powerful concept, but it is important to figure out how to build that into this platform with all these other pieces. Um, and so day one, it may not be the right thing to do, um, but as you grow and, and applications begin to take use of this, we want to have a way to make sure that we're um, scaling with that and, and integrating it into this platform. Uh, the same thing for data persistence. We know that many folks start with uh, non-persistent applications, but at some point, in inevitably, there is going to be uh, some core data, whether it's a database, data system, uh, streaming pipeline, et cetera, um, that is going to be on the platform. We're going to need to know how to store it, how to leverage um, the data capabilities, and how to back that data up. Um, security, of course, comes naturally, or perhaps not naturally, but needs to be thought of as part of this process. So um, building policies, making sure that teams are properly um, you know, built out to, to scale their application without imp impending on another one. So uh, very important and, and also from, of course, external threats. Um, logging and monitoring and, and the instrumentation piece, very crucial with how applications are being built now and how we want them to be built. Um, and of course, just more automation of the platform for things like lifecycle management, integration with CICD pipelines, uh, and role-based access control, identity management, that thing, that sort of thing. Uh, and finally, just more API gateway growth. Uh, we want to provide sort of the model with API gateway, um, so the, the, the two facet you know, approach where the development teams can very easily create APIs, but the platform team can very easily create a, a catalog of services of what happens when those APIs are created, what systems in the platform are leveraged, how are they scaled, how are they secured and, and built into this. Uh, so very important. So with this assessment and building the platform anew, uh, we look at three primary outcomes and goals. Um, the first, of course, is operational. We want to increase efficient, efficiency uh, and reliability. And mainly the, the process for this is through automation. So a lot of GitOps pipelines, principles that we take from GitOps, um, building into infrastructure as code and um, using the same sort of CI/CD tools and pipeline tools uh, and instrumentation to gain inf insight into what's going on um, to really automate the life cycle of the platform and the efficiency of the platform. Um, from there, we want to improve security posture across the stack. So um, this is everything from what the developer is doing and seeing dependencies that are being pulled in um, to what's being committed and, and scanned in the registries and repositories through the actual runtime and kernel space of Kubernetes. Uh, we want to have the ability to quarantine and do forensics and um, involve security from a policy perspective and from an automation perspective as well. Uh, and lastly, we want to enable developers to move faster through scale. So uh, a lot of developer onboarding processes, um, catalogs, and self-service that enables developers to pull in a Kafka pipeline or a database system uh, or leverage an existing API um, and balancing that innovation with enabling the application and, and operating environment uh, so that the operating team can scale and can operate in a very, very reliable production manner. Um, and really just pushing that information to developers as early as possible in that, that software cycle. And lastly, where do we do this? I mentioned before, this isn't just one container platform or one set of tools. This is any cloud, any platform, any application stack. Uh, so we see a lot of Spring Boot, for example, a lot of .NET. Um, those applications, as, as we're reconfiguring and, and using principles of 12-factor um, applications and microservices, um, building those onto platforms such as OpenShift or Tanzu uh, or even just Rancher from a very open source and very scalable perspective. Um, and, and really, this operating model built around those types of platforms on any cloud. So this could be in a, a vSphere cloud on-premises or in AWS. Um, it could be leveraging AWS cloud itself, uh, Azure, uh, Google, and, and really just regardless, these, these principles are important um, as we're building, running, and, and innovating these applications um, in all of these environments. So um, again, this is the container operating model. It is designed based on all of what we've seen in the different environments we've worked in as being necessary for the scalability and the performant runtime that we need to enable developers to build cloud native applications, which are vital to, to businesses and business functions as we grow today. So ask us more, we'd love to help. Thank you for listening.